Hi, this is Suzanne Henry. So sorry about that. I was having some technical difficulties. <laughs> so we are going to be um, talking today about essential oils. And wait a minute. What did I do? Where's my meeting controls? Not that one. This one. Okay. I think we are getting ready <laughs> for um, gardening with essential oils. So sorry about that. Having de technical difficulties today. But thank you for joining us again. I'm Suzanne Henry, a wellness advocate with doTERRA Essential Oils. And today we'll be talking about gardening and the use of essential oils in our garden, as well as how can we survive summer with our essential oils. So one of the first things that, you know, I like to use, especially in the springtime here in the Houston area, we get so much pollen and, and it's just miserable to breathe and, and, you know, all the different symptoms that arise when you're, you're attacked by pollen. And rather than go outside and wear a hazmat suit, what I like to do is use Tri-Ease soft gels. They have a um, the they have um, equal combination of lemon, lavender, and peppermint in each of the soft gels, and I like to take one or two as needed to help prevent some of those um, seasonal threats and and symptoms that that you get when you are around so much pollen and for inside of my home what I like to do is diffuse two drops of lemon lavender and peppermint oil to get some of that relief and to to clean the air out other good oils that you can use for respiratory support are breathe melaleuca or cilantro now also in my garden, I don't know about yours, but I have garden pests. They just like to follow me around. You know, the buzzing kind, particularly the mosquitoes, um, sometimes the wasps, you know, they'll fly around. Um, I'm not too keen on those. And, you know, sometimes in the evening time also when I'm out gardening, again, living in Houston early morning um, or, or more in the, in the, evening time it's nicer to be out in the garden just because of the temperature but um, also that brings out the mosquitoes and so Terra Shield is a great outdoor blend to keep those pests away and Terra Shield comes in a 30 milliliter spray bottle as well as a 15 milliliter bottle you can make your own homemade um, garden insect repellent by combining rosemary, peppermint, thyme, and clove in a small spray bottle and fill that with water. And that's wonderful to use also to um, keep those pests away. I have also made Terra Shield um, candles and use those on the patio. I made some for some friends and they like to use those for um, for their garden. I'm sorry, not their garden, but their patio. And um, uh, that will help to uh, keep the mosquitoes away. I have dogs, so keeping candles around is not a good idea, but I do have a small fan diffuser that I use and the Terra Shield is wonderful to keep the bugs um, out of out from the patio area, you know, away from us. And also put some Terra Shield on the collar of my pets and that helps keep the bugs away as well. So another thing, should you get bit, um, clove 
is good to numb the skin area. I like lemon because it helps break down the toxins, especially for the mosquitoes, can be a little stinging to apply though. Frankincense is good to offer some support at the bite area, and then lavender can provide a soothing sensation. And of course, to try to repel the bugs, Terra Shield. Sometimes we do have pests, you know, different kind of pests that get into our garden that like to eat some of our plants. Um, I know some bunnies and little critters might get into my garden. Peppermint essential oil placed on cotton balls can um, help. If you put those kind of at the burrow, you know, at the entrance of their burrows um, or holes, the peppermint oil can keep those critters or dissuade them from getting into your garden. You can place those strategically. Also other environmental threats that we might have in our garden, you know, and I can think of some of the different things that we get, some of the like mildew, moldy kind of things that, that crop up. Um, I know here in Houston, we get so much rainfall in the springtime that sometimes the, the soil around some of the plants can get um, can, you know, can look really bad. So combining some of these oils, the cedarwood, peppermint, cinnamon, thyme, geranium, lemongrass, arborvitae, and clove are great to have on hand. Typically my go-tos are the cedarwood, peppermint, lemongrass, and melaleuca. Those are the ones that I really like to use, but you can use a combination of these, put five to 10 drops of those oils in a gallon of water and spray to strategically around the base of your plants um, to, you know, to again, keep, um, keep the soil um, disease resistant and pet deterrent as well. Some pest control that we can use for essential oils. Again, if you take a look at this, peppermint is great for so many um, uh, pest control. And lemongrass is another one, cedarwood, and, uh, yeah, you know, again, the melaleuca as well. So those are really my four top oils that I like to use to keep those pests away. You can take a print screen of this if you like, if you have um, other, uh, other um, pests that are bugging you. I know sometimes slugs or snails, so cedar wood is good for those. Spiders don't like the peppermint. I don't have as much of a problem with the ticks, um, but sage would be good for that. So this combination, I know it's quite a lot of melaleuca in a cup of water, but if you use this combination, it can be good to apply to your uh, greenhouse surfaces and your garden tools, as well as some of the planters that you might use for um, you, you know, some of your different plants. If you change up planters, you wanna make sure that you, they are clean if you're introducing another plant to that container and spraying this combination helps um, helps with um, you know like your your molds and fungus and some of your diseases that your plants um, can carry our household pets they want to help in the garden also I remember seeing a Facebook of a dog, you know, trying to dig up some of the plants that uh, that their owner had just got done planting. That would be my dogs. They like to do that. And they don't dig around my rosemary bush though. So, you know, kind of maybe strategically plant rosemary to keep the the um, our household pets at bay and kitty cats you know they don't like rosemary either so if you want to spray some rosemary around the garden so that your cats are not using or neighbor cats right are not using um, your garden as their litter box that might help a little bit as well 
So we also, without pollinators, it's difficult to have any kind of a harvest unless we are self-pollinating, and I am not into that. So I want to attract all of the, <clears throat> the bees and the butterflies that I can. So not only do, can you plant some uh, uh, pollinator attracting plants, but you can also use these oils to attract the pollinators. If you take a, uh, you know, cloth strips, wet them with some water and spray them with your lemon, um, not lemon, well, lemon would work, but your lavender, marjoram, helichrysum, basil, rosemary, or sage, that will help attract some of the pollinators and then of course that can as that dries that will still have the oil on it that will um, uh, still attract the pollinators but you might have to um, spray those cloths a little bit more frequently particularly with the when it um, when it dries You know, I'm guilty of not always going out in my garden using using my gardening gloves. So when I'm pulling weeds, I might get, um, you know, stickers or cuts or, or, you know, skin irritations. My go-to is always lavender. I always keep that in my kitchen area. So I have that on hand. But then also Correct X is another good uh, ointment to keep on hand. It does not have any of the petroleum. Uh, in it that you know some that we don't want to expose ourselves to the petroleum products and so correct x is great for that <clears throat> helps purify the skin can hydrate and nourish the skin as well and then of course the deep blue essential oil blend that can provide um, soothing sensation to our skin and another thing that you can do, I use this with peppermint oil, but with the deep blue, you can take a cloth or a bandana with cold water and put a drop or two of the, the deep blue essential oil blend on it and place that around the neck to provide a cooling relief. Now being out in the garden, one of the things you know that I'm doing is lifting and pulling and moving moving plants, containers, so muscle and joint discomfort, um, you know, always happen after a good gardening session, right, and pulling weeds or hoeing and, you know, doing the weeding and stuff. So deep blue rub is wonderful for those sore backs and muscles. I always take the deep blue polyphenol complex that's internally one or two tablets, um, always one a day. But if I'm gardening, I'll take another um, another uh, capsule. And then lemongrass and wintergreen are good oils to have on hand to help rub those um, sore muscles. So with the summertime, you know, as we move into summertime, we have a tendency to um, be outside more, right? And so how can we incorporate essential oils into our summertime fun? One of the things I think about in camping is, you know, cooking a meal around the campfire, telling stories, singing songs, and just being outdoors and just enjoying the outdoor time. Well, Terra Shield, definitely to keep the bugs at bay, is, is something that I like to use. Using the Terra Shield spray um, is very, very handy. And um, to, to rub the exposed skin so that um, you're not going to get those bug bites. I think about having deep blue rub on hand, especially if you know, if you're camping in a camper, the mattress, or if you're backpacking using a sleeping bag, um, you know, the ground is not always that comfortable. So having sore joints, a sore back, sore shoulders in the morning time to have that deep blue to rub on can provide some relief. And then also just with some of the, the foods that we might eat, it might have some dis, um, discomfort indigestion um, 
you know, gas bloating, right? Being irregular, the digestion to keep that on hand can help with uh, those camping activities. And then sometimes we'd like to just have uh, relief from the heat. So being out on the water to cool off, whether it's at the lake, river, ocean, the swimming pool, even right, fresh water, um, boating, kayaking, canoeing, some of those activities. You know, we've got bugs on the water, so using Terra Shield to keep the bugs at bay will help with that. I like to lounge, and so. Um, you know, lavender, balance, have a few drops of those and to kind of help with relaxation. If you are just lounging around by the pool or at the beach. Um, and then again, using the deep blue products to help with any kind of sore muscles that we're not used to using. <clears throat> Hiking, biking, and rock climbing. You know, those are some fun activities and they can really you know, have a lot of physical exertion for us and provide some, unfortunately, some physical discomfort. So again, you know, I sound like a broken record, but keeping that deep blue on hand to help um, soothe those sore muscles. Another thing we want to do is make sure that we stay hydrated when we are exerting a lot of physical energy. And some folks might not like to just drink plain water. So you can add some lemon or citrus oils to the water or peppermint oil. I like the peppermint in my water because it not only um, satiates me, but it also keeps me cooler. I feel like it just has that internal thermometer where it just decreases it a little bit so I don't get quite as overheated as what I um, might and then elevation or citrus bliss, you can use those maybe on um, to inhale them, put the few drops in your hand and inhale to keep you going. You know, if you do have a long hike um, or put those kind of on your collar, um, you know, or on your shirt so that you're diffuse, breathing those in to keep you uh, stimulated to go a little bit longer. And then after those hikes, using some cypress on your legs to kind of give them a soothing sensation and even to energize them a little bit. Cypress is really good for that. And again, don't forget about that Terra Shield. I know I did mention lemon in your water. And if you have, uh, if you're using a camelback, you want to just make sure that it has a good grade of plastic because if you are using a citrus oil to um, flavor your water, you want to make sure that that is um, uh, uh, not leaching into the plastic or breaking that plastic down. Now, of course, you know, some are fun. Most of the time we're out in the sun, aren't we? So you want to make sure that you use a sunscreen to protect your skin. You don't want to get that sunburn. You can... Um, you, you can go on doTERRA's website and find some different ingredients, not ingredients, but recipes for some sunscreen, some homemade sunscreen if you don't want to use, you know, some of the sunscreens that are available just because of the different chemicals um, that they put in it to have that, um, you know, controversy about how those can be harmful to us. But one of the things that we can use is Immortel. It is a wonderful blend to, to soothe the skin and provide us a smoother, radiant, um, youthful looking skin. It's wonderful to use on the face. And then myrrh, lavender, or melaleuca can also be soothing to the skin. You can add those to um, some of your creams or lotions um, and, and put those on your body to, to help with some soothing, make the skin feel more comfortable. 
And then also, you know, you can't forget about your hair care, right? A lot of times being out in the chlorinated pool or, or um, a new summer look, you might have some new hair color, right? So using doTERRA's protecting shampoo as well as the conditioner can help prevent static, leave your hair healthy, strong, and smooth. So, um, you know, don't forget about your hair care as well. And then after sun soothing spray, one of the homemade sprays that you can make, use a 16 ounce spray glass bottle, add some aloe vera juice, some fractionated coconut oil, add some vitamin E along with eight drops of lavender, melaleuca, and peppermint, and spray that on for a soothing after sun um, sun relief. Also, the body can become overheated, and with that, you have different sensations. You know, the, the, I know for me to bring that body temperature down, peppermint is wonderful to use. You can wet a cloth, add some peppermint essential oil to that, put that along the back of the neck. Also take some peppermint oil, <clears throat> sorry, take some peppermint oil and um, put that to your pulse points like your wrist, back of the neck, your armpits or the groin area to cool the body down. Digestion helps relief stomach upset that can happen with overheating and then basil um, can help to stimulate the nervous system if you have a little bit of, of you know some of that nervous um, sensation from just being overheated. Another cooling spray, you can combine peppermint and lavender, <coughs> excuse me, into some distilled water and witch hazel into a spray bottle. And that can be a wonderful uh, cooling sensation. Now, of course, when we're talking about summer fun, you know, we want to talk about, you know, sometimes our body just is not in shape for summer fun. So help with weight management. Some of the citrus oils it can help um, decrease some of the cravings that we might have. So grapefruit is good for that. Lemon. Um, some folks will like some of the tangerine or the wild orange. Again, my go-to is peppermint. I absolutely love peppermint essential oil. I go through a lot of that every month. Cinnamon is also good, as is ginger. And then don't forget our Slim and Sassy, our metabolic blend. That is wonderful to use in water um, or in some tea. I've even used it in my coffee, and that's really good. Uh, and also the Slim and Sassy products uh, where you can use um, the powder for some shakes to help with the satiation and decrease some of the cravings that we might have. Also, summer fun, we travel, right? And if you're traveling in a car using the wild orange and peppermint blend in a diffuser or um, putting it on a cotton ball and a paper, paper clip or um, what is it, a clothespin, right, to, to keep that um, going for your car to help you have that wide awake feeling, fear of flying, serenity, balance, and console, um, console, sorry, essential oil are good to have on hand, um, serenity and balance combined together in equal amounts with some fractionated coconut oil in a roller bottle is a wonderful zen sensation. Um, and it's wonderful to diffuse. So if you're around family, diffuse serenity and balance together, and that will kind of keep the air nice and calm. Ear discomfort from flying. I use some digestion. I put it that, I rub that on the back of my ears or in the front of my ears to help ease um, that, that popping and tight sensation that I will get. Also, digestive support. You know, summertime, your routines might change, especially if you're on vacation, right? You're eating different foods. You might indulge in a little bit more than what you are used to. 
than what you allow when you're at home or some motion sickness. So digestin is really good with that. Peppermint, fennel, ginger are in the digestin blend, but you can also use those separately as well to um, take internally or you can rub them um, on your abdomen. Yeah, um, peppermint might be a little bit, um, to rub peppermint directly on the abdomen might be a little bit irritating, especially for babies. So you can use some fractionated coconut oil with that. If you do have overexposure, you know, to the sun, those, some of those sunburns, um, you can add some oils to your bath. You can add some Roman chamomile, lavender, and frankincense to some milk and put that in your bath water. Or you can add some aloe vera juice, geranium, and lavender into the bath and get, you know, a soothing sensation from your sunburn. I do not. Um, uh, I, I pity these feet. I've had a sunburn that bad before and I did not have essential oils on hand. I wish I did. But oil care and safety. Definitely keep the oils out of the heat and light. You know, they're in their little amber bottles because they are light sensitive. We want to make sure that um, we don't... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, keep them in the heat. Um, I, I had Terra Shield spray where I kept in my car and I live in Houston. So your essential oils, you know, it's recommended to keep them below 104 degrees, right? Room air um, or room temperature. Well, uh, you know, keeping it in the car, it melted and bent my, my little spray black Spray bottle of Terra Shield. I can still use it, but um, you know, I would not recommend keeping it in your car. Your citrus oils, if you take them internally, they can cause photosensitivity. Um, use them externally, you know, so you just want to make sure that you avoid that or limit your sun exposure. Um, wait 12 hours. And of course, citrus oils, they have um, uh, uh, they can destroy your plastic or your styrofoam. So you just want to make sure that you, when you use them, add them to your water or whatever that you're um, using glass, ceramic or stainless steel containers. And as I mentioned, your camelbacks, uh, your camelbacks, you want to make sure that um, it's a, a good grade of plastic so that the citrus oils, if you do add them, will not um, leach in and destroy your camelback. Any questions that you might have, you know, you can definitely go on the doTERRA.com doTERRA website and research some of the different essential oils. They have a blog where you have different recipes that you can use, um, sunscreen, candles, food recipes, and... Um, you know, other recipes for gardening. You can take a look at some of those things. And also our Facebook page, the Happy Healthy Oilers, Happy Healthy Oils Public Education site on Facebook. You can join us there. And if you have any questions, um, we'll be glad to answer those questions for you. And I thank you. I wish you wonderful gardens, bountiful harvest, and a great summer, and God bless. Thank you.